Hello there, welcome back to the channel. I am Grand Moff Tony. Now, over the last couple of years, we've had a lot of trial and error on where to buy our Black Series figures, and whether you're a seasoned pro or whether you're new to the whole collecting game, I thought today I would share some of the best places that I've found to buy Black Series figures. Now, I'm not going to be including places that I don't personally shop at, and I'm not going to be including, like, local stores that really wouldn't be relevant unless you live, like, right near where I live, which would be a bit weird. I am, however, going to include a few places that maybe I didn't have the best experience with, and a couple of places that I have completely divorced from my collecting journey. So here are a few places that I would recommend, and just a few that I would also recommend that you avoid. Starting out with a few online retailers. Now, predominantly, I like to do my collecting in person. I like to actually see what I'm getting. I like to support the local businesses. I like to actually find a figure in the wild. It's way more exciting than just ordering it online. But we all know that's not always possible. Exclusives, difficult to find figures, and rapidly reducing stocks in brick and mortar locations. So here are a couple of online stores that I've used. Starting out with a bit of a mixed bag, we have Entertainment Earth. Now, I've had some great experiences with them, I've had some not so great experiences with them, so let me get into that a little bit. Now, a good thing about Entertainment Earth that I found is that you can actually buy entire waves in a box. I did this once, uh, when the Galaxy line started. Basically, you just pay one lump sum, you usually get a figure for free in there, but you do also get a couple of duplicates, depending on the wave. I think the duplicate that I got was the Imperial Stormtrooper, so that's not so bad. But I've also seen duplicates of, like, characters that you wouldn't want more than one of. So it's kind of a hit-and-miss scenario, where sometimes you'll get a good one, sometimes you won't get quite such a good one. A bit of a detractor for Entertainment Earth is that while you don't get charged until your item ships, you have no way of knowing when that item's gonna ship. Or if it's gonna ship. Ever. So you may well have the money to put down for that big wave case when you see it and you order it, but you may not know exactly when that wave is going to ship. So one day you'll just open your bank account and surprise, a large amount of money has just been withdrawn because your crate has shipped. Let me share with you a little mini horror story that I'm sure a few people out there can relate to. A while ago, about two years ago, I ordered the Bad Batch Crosshair from Entertainment Earth. Now this was in October of 2020 that I placed this order and everything else that I ordered with him to get the free shipping showed up promptly and with no problems. But Crosshair, there was no sign of him. Time went on and to be honest, I kind of forgot that I had ordered him except every now and then, every six months or so, I'd get an email from Entertainment Earth saying, here is your order. It's still not ready. Here's when we think it's going to be ready. And I started to notice that that ship date for Crosshair was getting pushed out just a little more each and every time until finally it had been about two years since I ordered this figure. And I've seen people on Instagram that have got theirs. I've seen people all over Reddit that have got theirs. And I'm sitting here thinking, where's mine? Where's my Crosshair? So finally, I, I did write them a small email just saying, hey, just reaching out to see where this guy is, um, any update on this? And they sent me an email to assure me that while they have no control over when they will receive the product from the distributor, I will have my crosshair very soon. About a week after that, Hasbro announced that the Black Series crosshair was being discontinued, and I reached out to Entertainment Earth again to ask, would this affect my pre-order? Yes. Yes, it would. My pre-order was cancelled. <laughs> I never received my Bad Batch Crosshair. I've, I have Imperial Crosshair, so I'm quite happy with that. But unfortunately, Bad Batch Crosshair is a figure that I missed out on because I ordered it from Entertainment Earth and I never received it. So, bit of a mixed bag for Entertainment Earth. Sometimes they're great, sometimes they're not. I would probably use them again. I don't know if I would use them to pre-order again. Now let's talk about the other place that I ordered Commander Cody from. <laughs> Big Bad Toy Store. Now, me and Big Bad Toy Store, we go way back. Way back to when I was collecting Transformers back in 09. And I don't know if it was to do with the fact that I still lived in the UK when I was ordering from Big Bad. But every single time I ordered from them, my product would arrive in the UK and it would get stopped at customs for a week, and I'd get charged like an extra £30 on top of the shipping to receive my item. This happened every time I ordered from them. So it's kind of left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth. I did give them another chance when Commander Cody came around, and I said I wanted to order it more than once to make sure I got it. Never showed up. I ordered Commander Cody's archive release from Big Bad Toy Store, 
and I never saw it. I was never charged for it. I think they took like a dollar as a holding fee, but I never, never saw that figure. So Big Bad Toy Store and I, we still don't talk. I haven't quite divorced them yet, but I'm thinking of filing the paperwork. Let's talk about Hasbro Pulse, because if you want to collect Hasbro toys, why not go straight to Hasbro? Now, being as Hasbro Pulse is Hasbro's predominant means of selling to the public, I don't really understand why they don't have more stock available. They always have new stuff, the new stuff that's coming out, but I feel like they could take a serious bite out of the aftermarket if they offered more figures, more figures that they produce. Now, obviously, I'm not an expert on toy manufacturing. I don't know how licenses work. So maybe there's a reason why they can't just keep their own stock of their product and continue to sell it direct to the public. But if a reason does exist, I kind of want to know what it is. Because, personally, I have nothing but good things to say about Hasbro Pulse. Every time I have ordered from them, I have received my item promptly. They always do good offers on shipping if you buy enough stuff, and it arrives very, very quickly. As I said in my recent Cassian review, I ordered him on Sunday and I received him on Thursday. This is a brand new figure. I felt like I was one of the first to get my hands on it. It was great. And also, because it is Hasbro themselves that I'm ordering from, I feel like I can trust that my pre-order is not going to get cancelled. Now, I've seen that some people have had issues with Hasbro Pulse, but I can only speak to my own experience, and personally, I've had nothing but a good experience with Hasbro Pulse, so I will continue to use them. They have great access to exclusives, the shipping is great, thumbs up for Hasbro Pulse. Moving away from online retailers now, because as I say, I am predominantly an in-store collector. So here are a few of the places that I always make sure that I hit on my regular toy hunts. First up, we have Target. Now, I have plenty of Targets in my local area, and they usually are pretty well stocked with a lot of the new stuff. You, the only real game of chance is that you never really know what's going to peg warm when it comes to Target. Unless it's a Lando, that's probably going to peg warm. So, for me, because I have no self-control, if I see a new figure at Target, I'm going to buy it. Right there and then. I don't care how much it is. The only problem being that about three or four weeks later, I might find that exact same figure on the shelf at half the price because it's being clearanced out. One thing I will say in support of Target is that I have pre-ordered from them many, many times, and they've always gone the extra mile to protect my pre-order from the local scalpers. Just as an example, when I pre-ordered the Black Series Commander Pyre, I was actually stopped in the Target store, and the cashier had to call a manager to come over to verify my identity, because that very same morning, a scalper had walked into the store and tried to walk out with their entire supply of Commander Pyres, and one eagle-eyed Target employee had stopped him at the checkout and seen to it that those figures did not leave the store. And I am eternally grateful for that because I have never, never seen Commander Pyre in person since that day. So I will always support Target. They've gone the extra mile to protect my orders. I'm very happy with them. Now let's talk about Walmart. Now, <laughs> Walmart's toy section is always a hot mess. I, it's always understocked. There's stuff in the wrong place. There's stuff that's clearly been hidden so that somebody else can come back for it later. And I feel like the, the Walmarts in our local area, they don't really get any of the new releases with the exception of the ones that are going to peg warm and be there for a year. I'm pretty sure there is a General Lando in my local Walmart that has been there since the day that he came out. I'm convinced that it's the same one. Something I forgot to mention with Target that I'll mention now is the exclusives. They are pretty good at managing their exclusives. Walmart, on the other hand, are notoriously bad for handling their exclusives. Everybody remembers that Clone Wars wave, right? The one that never showed up in store, the one that sold out instantly and was all over eBay within a few seconds because people used bots to buy out all of the available stock. Now, I have the wave in my collection. I didn't get it at retail, and my wife has always refused to tell me how much she paid for it on the secondary market. And frankly, I don't want to know. So if I could change one thing, one thing in all of collecting, I would take away Walmart's exclusive access to Black Series figures. Now the next one is 
kind of regional, but it's also kind of popular, so I feel like it would be in other states besides mine. It's Maya. It's your local, friendly neighborhood Maya. Now, Maya is by no stretch of the imagination a toy store, but they do have a toy section. And that toy section, while it often is populated with older figures and figures that have peg warmed for a very, very long time, I don't think anyone has told Maya recently that the price of Black Series figures has gone up, because they're all still $19, $20. On top of this, you're likely to find a few army builders in there. I believe my local Maya still has the Archive Death Trooper and the Archive Shore Trooper, and they are at reasonable army builder prices, so I've picked up a couple of extras. And of course, as I mentioned in my Black Series collecting journey, Maya is where my wife found the Black Series Mandalorian. After months of searching for him, that's where he showed up. Add to this the fact that every now and then they try to shift all of their stock by putting it on really, really good value sales. If you've got a Maya in your local area, check it out. You might get lucky. Next up is GameStop. Now, I will always hit a GameStop when I see it. I don't care how many lanes of traffic I have to cut across. I'm going to that GameStop. Now, where GameStop used to be on the expensive end of collecting, with the prices going up over the last year or so, GameStops haven't really moved. So they're pretty much in line with a lot of the other local retailers. And actually, very recently, they've been putting a lot of their stock on clearance. I remember recently when I was in GameStop, they had Zalbar going for a little over $10 when I picked him up the last time I was in the UK for about £25. But really, GameStop's biggest selling point is their yearly membership. It's $15 a year, and every single month you get $5 off anything. That's $5 off a Black Series figure. That takes it down to about 20 bucks. Add to that the fact that their Black Series section is usually pretty well stocked. It's pretty well stocked with the same figures. Like, you'll go in there and you'll see, you know, 10 or 12 odd uh, Night Brother Warriors that seem to be the bane of GameStop's existence right about now. But GameStop is where I've picked up quite a few of my recent favorite figures. Bib Fortuna I got at GameStop. I picked up Cobb Vanth and my Republic Commandos from GameStop. Plus, it helps that I can always pick up the phone and just say, hey, it's the British Star Wars guy and they know exactly who's calling. So yeah, GameStop is somewhere I would definitely recommend stopping into if you see one in your local area. It might be a local place, but I just want to take a brief moment to shout out Second and Charles as well. Now, this is a second-hand collectible store where people can take their old collectibles, sell them to the store, and then they will resell them based on what the going rate is. And while they do have a glass cabinet of incredibly expensive collectibles that I like to just stare at and pretend that I could one day own, they also do have an array of just regular Black Series figures, and recently they've been getting some good ones. I saw the convention exclusive Jedi Master Luke in there the last time I was there, I've picked up a few cheap troopers from there, and they do also offer uh, loose figures in little bags. That's how I was able to find the Bespin Escape Leia. She came in a little bag, I picked her up, I took her home. So, Second and Charles, I don't really know off the top of my head if it's just a local place or if they're a chain place, but I really like them. It's always worth stopping in there. Up next, I have to throw a shout out to Best Buy. Best Buy have quite often had the best buy on my toy hunts. Recently, they've been coming in with the Figurin Dans. I've found two at Best Buy so far. I found the comic book variant Black Crescenton at a Best Buy. And I also found the convention exclusive Starkiller Strikes Luke at a Best Buy. And their prices have remained pretty constant. The last time I was in there, they had the entire Kenobi wave at about $22.50. So that's pretty fair considering how much they cost you somewhere else. Add this to the fact that their stuff goes on clearance pretty regularly and pretty quickly. The last time we were in there, I'm pretty sure Dr. Everson and Yavin Leia were on clearance. That's pretty great. You can pick those up for a steal if I hadn't already paid full price for them. So Best Buy is a solid place to get your action figure fix. They do have a lot of horror figures in there as well. They're always quite tempting, but I'm trying my best not to start another collection. So those are a few places that I really do recommend shopping at for Black Series. I have saved the worst for last. I'm pretty sure you're gonna know where I'm going with this. We're talking about FYE, for your entertainment indeed. Someone posted on Reddit recently uh, a picture of a thoroughly stocked Black Series section, and I didn't even need to look at where it was because I knew where it was. It's FYE, and there's a reason why their collectible section is so thoroughly stocked. It's because no self-respecting collector would ever shop at FYE. 
and I'm gonna tell you why. So let's talk about the prices. If you're buying a Black Series figure from FYE, you can expect to pay up to double the recommended retail price. I have seen the photo reel update for Jin Erso on the shelf for $40, when you could pick it up for $25 literally anywhere else. But the most scathing example recently, I think, the Archive C-3PO, $45 at FYE, when you can pick it up in Target for 19 bucks. Back when I was naive enough to shop there, there wasn't a single figure that I bought at FYE for an absurd amount of money that I did not find somewhere else a few weeks later, maybe a month later, at a fraction of the cost. But moving on from the frankly absurd prices, if you're going to shop at FYE, get ready to have an incredibly awkward interaction with your cashier. They are so pushy when it comes to their backstage membership. It's $11 a month, and their biggest selling point is that when you sign up for it, you get 10% off. And they say, oh, you can just go home and cancel it, no problem. Yeah, no problem. It took me six weeks to cancel it the last time I was stupid enough to sign up for it. The person that I spoke to on the phone wouldn't cancel it until I gave him a reason. And every reason I gave him, he had a rebuttal for it. I was on the phone for about 20 minutes trying to get this stupid membership cancelled that, from what I could tell, afforded me absolutely no advantage. But that's not even the worst of it. I don't know what sort of detail I'm allowed to go into here, but I work at a credit union and I have at least a member every other month or so that comes in and says they shopped at FYE a while back and now they're getting this really weird charge on their statement each month. And when I ask them, did they ask you for an email address? They say yes. They wanted my email address so that they could send me the receipt. No, 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 ma'am. They wanted your email address so that they could sign you up for their membership without asking you. That's why they wanted your email address. Absolutely mind-boggling to me that this place stays in business and flourishes, but actually at the same time it doesn't really. All they have to do is sell one or two absurdly overpriced collectibles a month and they've made their rent. Add to that the money that they managed to con out of people with their backstage membership, and yeah, maybe it's not so surprising that FYE stays in business. But I, personally, will never set foot in one again. Between the absurd prices, my horrible experience with the membership, and the fact that they run you over the rails every time you're at that till, trying to get you to take that membership. The last time I was in there, I think it must have been a little time before July of this year when I finally said, that's it, I'm, o I'm over this, I'm divorcing FYE. I took my item to the till, my absurdly overpriced 501st archive release of Clone Trooper, and after the usual interaction, did you want the backstage membership? No thank you. Are you sure you'll get 10% off this purchase? I don't care, I'm not interested. Well, do you think you could pay in cash then? They check the card machine to make sure we're selling the memberships. I beg your pardon? I don't care. I don't want your stupid membership. Frankly, I don't even want this figure right now. It's another figure that I bought it and a few months later we got it for cheaper. I deeply regret it. I don't get buyer's remorse unless FYE is involved. So if you take anything, even the slightest bit of advice away from this video, stop shopping at FYE for your collectibles. Just stop it. It's not worth it. <laughs> Keep shopping there, you're part of the problem. <laughs> So those were a few places that I recommend shopping at for your Black Series collecting habits, and one place that I recommend that you never set foot in again. Are there any more that you know of that I've missed out? Maybe I don't know about them yet, I'm pretty slow. So maybe just drop them down below and I'll check them out. I've been Grand Moff Tony, you may subscribe when ready.